In our last study, we found how Jesus was the gate for the sheep and how he has come that we might have life and have life to the full. Uh, those words in John 10.10 10 are so well known and such an amazing promise from Jesus. In this study, we're going to look at uh, what Jesus says about himself as the good shepherd. And both these themes of being the gate for the sheep and being the good shepherd, they, they really do blend with each other. Uh, but in this study, we, we want to look specifically at what Jesus says about being the good shepherd. When Jesus says that he is a shepherd, um, he's picking up a, an image that was well known, particularly in the Old Testament and in the world of his day. Uh, often, the leaders of Israel were compared to shepherds. And perhaps the most famous uh, passage in the Old Testament that it talks about leadership in terms of a shepherd is Psalm 23, when David talks about God being his shepherd, God being his leader. So Jesus is really saying in this passage that he is our leader. And he's not just any old kind of leader. He is a good leader. He's a capable leader. He's a trustworthy leader. He's a leader that we can rely on. And Jesus says that uh, he is the, the shepherd or the leader who lays down his life for the sheep. When this little word for, or the word that's translated for, is used in John's Gospel, it almost always uh, is referring to some sort of sacrificial act. And when Jesus says that he lays down his life for the sheep, it is a reference once again uh, to his sacrificial death for us on the cross of Calvary. So Jesus is the good leader, the trustworthy leader, and he has laid down his life for us. Not only that, um, this shepherd, this leader um, that Jesus describes himself as, is one who protects us. Uh, in these verses uh, that you will have read as, as part of this study, and you will find how Jesus compares himself to um, someone who is often uh, referred to, or in the words translated as a harling, a hard hand, uh, how the hard hand uh, flees uh, under threat from the enemy. And Jesus says he's not like that. Um, he's not someone who's just there for the good times and when the pressure's on and when things go against us, uh, he runs away. No, he, he sticks around and he fights our battles for us. He fights off the threats that come against us. Uh, it's very encouraging, isn't it, to know uh, that uh, when we're in spiritual conflict, when the enemy comes against us, when he wants to harm us or attack us or even destroy us, uh, that the good shepherd, the good leader, is there with us to fight our battles. This theme of Jesus um, being on our side and fighting our battles for us is found in other places in the New Testament. And um, two in particular uh, spring to mind, Romans 8, 34 and Hebrews 7, 25, where in both of these passages we are told how Jesus intercedes for us. He intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. And Hebrews uh, 7, 25 says that he ever lives to intercede for us and that he's able to, to save completely all those who come to God through him. So Jesus is our protector. He's the one who fights our battles for us and, and that gives us great security. It gives us great confidence as uh, we walk through life. And Jesus also says that he's the good shepherd who knows his sheep by name. And once again, here we have the, the picture of the Middle Eastern shepherd who has this very close relationship with his sheep. He knows who's who and uh, he, he has this very special relationship with them. And Jesus says that he knows each of us by name. Uh, he knows us as individuals. We're not treated just as, uh, as, uh, as some sort, in some sort of impersonal way or just a, a number. Jesus knows you and me individually. He knows what makes us tick. He knows our greatest hopes. He knows our greatest fears. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. And he knows just what is right for us at any given moment in time or at any particular period in our lives. 
again in this passage we see the incredibly close relationship that Jesus has with us. Uh, though notice once again um, that Jesus talks about this relationship in the context of us being part of his flock. It's not just that we have an individual relationship with Jesus, it's as we gather with his people, as we're part of his people, um, we develop uh, this uh, very, very close relationship with the Good Shepherd, or as I've translated it or, or uh, paraphrased it a little bit, the, the good leader, the trustworthy leader. So this is a, once again an incredible picture of a God who reveals himself to us in Christ as someone who knows us intimately and wants us to know him intimately and wants us to know that we can trust his leadership and we can expect to hear his voice and we can expect him to guide us in a way that's good for us. Finally, Jesus says that he has sheep um, that aren't yet part of the flock and, and he, he's looking for those sheep as well. This reveals the, the big heartedness of God. Uh, he wants to expand his flock. Um, he's thinking about people who at this moment are outside of the flock. Uh, some of those people are your family members, uh, they're your friends, your, your neighbors, people that you work with. Um, they don't know God yet, but yet God longs to know them. And Jesus says here, and that he has a, a heart for those uh, who are not yet part of the flock and he desires to bring them in and to make them part of the flock. I think that that's something that uh, we should reflect on, can meditate on, and uh, when we think of, of church and when we think of the, uh, the great relationships and fellowship that we have within the life of the church, that God hasn't intended this just to be something that's exclusive for us, his heart is that those who are outside of the flock, who are outside of the fold, who are disconnected uh, from him and disconnected uh, from the people of God should come and should find life and be part of what he's doing and know that kind of intimacy with him um, that he has revealed he has with us in the person of Jesus Christ. So we have this once again, an incredible picture of God, an amazing picture of a God who has come close to us in Jesus and has opened his heart to us so that we can know him intimately.